Andre Drummond's Laker debut was the first game he's played in over a month, and he ended up leaving the game after only 12 minutes of action with a toe contusion. Hobbling with that injury, he looked shaky in his debut, and over the years, the Big Penguins faced his fair share of criticism. Because despite being a four-time rebounding champion and a two-time All-Star, Drummond shooting a career-low 54.5% from 0 to 3 feet in 2021. Due to that, and his underwhelming stroke from the free throw line, maybe you've come to think of him as an overrated player. However, with Drummond's new team in LA, once the Lakers front court gets healthy, his abilities mesh perfectly next to LeBron James and Anthony Davis. I know he got injured in his first game rocking the purple and gold, but in the long term, you're about to see every reason for why Andre Drummond makes the Lakers scary. And stay tuned because later on, we'll look at if the Lakers are the current favorites to get out of the Deep Western Conference. Right before that, comments or shout out to Blink Yee for saying the Raptors' biggest problem is having a consistent core and that the Raptors need a man in the middle. Well, Blink, it's too late to get a center, but at least the Raptors wave Darren Baines. <laughs> April Fools! No, God! No, God, please, no! No! Thanks for every great answer. The question for next video shout out is coming up, but let's get into this. With their two best players out for an extended period of time in LeBron James and Anthony Davis, the Lakers needed to shake things up. So after the Cavaliers and Andre Drummond agreed to a buyout, LA General Manager Rob Palenka seized the opportunity to sign the former All-NBA player. But Andre's look like far from the first-class center that he once was in 2016, as in 2021, the man's usage rate is higher than the Greek freaks, yet he's averaging just 17.5 points. But before you come to your conclusions on Drummond as the worst high-usage offensive player in the league, you have to consider that not every player, not even every all-star, is fit to be a number one or two scoring option. And the fact that Drummond's usage rate is higher than a Dedekumpo's proves how much Cleveland was relying on him. But with his new team in LA, when the NBA's best one-two punch returns to the Laker lineup, Andre won't have nearly as much pressure on him. The playmaking of Darius Garland is one thing, but LeBron James is one of the greatest dime droppers this game has ever seen, and the King's going to open up a ton of space for Drummond, which should allow him to beast on defenders like he did back in his prime. We also can't forget the motivation factor and how it feels for a player when they go from an up-and-coming small market team to a championship contender filled with the world's best talent. Just look at how Blake Griffin has resembled the Lob City version of himself after not having dunked for the entire season before that. Speaking of Blake, that's the best player Andre's ever had next to him before he signed in LA. And similarly to Griffin, Drummond's been hearing nothing about how trash he is for years. If you saw the screenshots in the first seconds of this video, then you only know a fraction of the disrespect Andre's received from the media, so he's hungry to win. More on that later on. Ever since being selected ninth overall in the 2012 NBA Draft by the Pistons, the soon-to-be 28-year-old Drummond has never won a playoff game. Andre's eight grueling years in Detroit came to an end in January of 2020, as he was then traded to another lively city in Cleveland in exchange for John Henson, Brandon Knight, and a 2023 first-round pick. You're well within your right to criticize Drummond's value, but he's never been given the right situation for his talents to thrive. For example, if the Warriors take Drummond with the number 7 pick, or the Raptors take him with the number 8 pick in the 2012 draft, then we're not having this discussion debating if Drummond has value or not. The man's not an outstanding rim protector, but has an underrated defensive awareness. If he had enough games under his belt to qualify, Drummond would be tied with Nikola Jokic for the highest amount of steals per game among centers. A big reason for why GM Rob Palinka's addition of Andre Drummond was super necessary is because two players who the Lakers lost in free agency last offseason were crucial to them winning a championship. JaVale McGee in the starting lineup, but most prominently Dwight Howard off the bench, provided an excellent second line of defense which supported Anthony Davis when he was on and off the floor. In 2019-20, the Lakers ranked 7th among NBA teams for the fewest points allowed in the painted area, a ranking that's plummeted to number 20 in the 2021 season. 
To be fair, Andre Drummond's not close to the type of shot blocker that, say, Rudy Gobert is, but even with a severe toe contusion in his Lakers debut, the product of UConn showed off what he's capable of doing when he's locked in. Here, Drummond forces Giannis into the pass and then gets back to stuff DiVincenzo impressively at the basket. Unfortunately, for the majority of his first game rocking the purple and gold, Andre was moving gingerly and really didn't look like himself. The toe contusion that he suffered is Andre's eighth different injury since the start of 2020. Against Milwaukee in his first game, it was a pretty disappointing outing for Drummond as he only scored four points, shooting two of six from the field. The man pulled in just a single board as he struggled to shake off the rust after a month off. LA was outscored by eight points in his 14 minutes of play, and after leaving the game late in the first half, he was ruled out after only a brief third quarter stint due to a right big toe contusion. Lakers coach Frank Vogel said that Drummond almost didn't return in the second half, but wanted to give it a go. Thankfully, one bit of good news in a painful season to watch play out for Laker fans is the fact that Drummond is considered day-to-day -day and he's gonna be reevaluated tomorrow. After the game, Drummond told reporters that Brooke Lopez stepped on his foot in the first quarter and that's what caused the injury. Drummond replaced Marc Gasol in the starting lineup to begin the night, and Gasol didn't play until the fourth quarter when Drummond was hurt. That tells me that the Lakers were ready to roll with Andre and Montrez as their only big men had the injury not gotten in their way. Gasol and Harrell split their center minutes this season, an especially important position with Anthony Davis out. Call him soft all you want for leaving the game. But Andre tried to play two quarters visibly hurting on that toe, and the nail on his big right toe was reportedly completely ripped off in the first quarter when Lopez stepped on it. Andre said he didn't notice the extent of the injury until halftime, but you gotta feel for this guy because not only did he get hurt in a debut that had the eyes of the NBA universe on him, but he was forced to perform without the Lakers' two best players. The brunt of the Bucks' defensive game plan was squarely based on him, just like it was when Andre was with the Cavs and Pistons. But the reason I'm not overreacting to his underwhelming debut is because in a matter of weeks when the Lakers' generationally great duo gets healthy, they're going to open up everything for this man, and the big penguin's going to be a different animal. Yes, he's become prone to missing a ton of layups around the basket, but with the coaching of Frank Vogel, who wants to see his players attack with force and confidence around the basket, as well as one of the greatest NBA leaders ever in LeBron James holding him accountable, Drummond's percentage from zero to three feet should take a significant step forward. LA also has the speedy playmaking of Dennis Schroeder who could form a pick and roll combination with Andre that could be effective, but I'm most looking forward to seeing if LeBron can get the most out of his new center. One thing's for sure, the 28 year old big man seems desperate to contribute as his first Laker interview, he was quoted as saying, The level of excitement for me is at an all-time high. For me, I thought it was just the best fit in being here. I'm able to come in right away and impact the team defensively, just with my toughness on both sides of the court, but mainly defensively, just coming here to be the anchor for this team. I made the decision based on what's best for me, not because of what anybody told me. Definitely in talking to this team, talking to those guys about how I fit on the team, was a fun process for me, and having that conversation with these two guys and what they were looking for from me was something I was willing and excited to do, especially for this franchise. I'm not here to do anything besides win. That's a great mentality for Andre, and he seems ready for the challenge for playing for the defending champs, and now all he has to do is get healthy, and so do LeBron and AD. But even with their injuries, I'm still not betting against the Lakers to get out of the West, and the Drummond edition is going to really help them against centers they're likely to match up with in the Stifle Tower for the Utah Jazz, Rudy Gobert, and the Joker for the Denver Nuggets in Nikola Jokic. LeBron's gone to nine of the last 10 NBA Finals, and while the first place Jazz are scary in their own right, up to this point in the season, I haven't seen that one team that matches up well enough with the Lakers in order to take them out in the playoff series. At the end of the day, beating LeBron with another top five player on his team in four games out of seven is nearly an impossible task. And the Drummond signing adds that third weapon down low, which could lead the Lake Show to their second straight title in a summer of playoff basketball that's going to be incredible to watch and I can't wait for. The playoffs can't come soon enough. 
Subscribe if you enjoyed that video. Tons of dope content on the way that I can't wait to upload for y'all. The question for next video shout out is, how much better does Andre Drummond make the Lakers? This was D-Flow. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.